O oh God, who in the beginning hovered over the waters of creation, now hover over us, we pray. Wash over us and fill us as we gather around the world to celebrate this work of grace, this gift of formation and scholarship at this, your seminary, which we now also love as our seminary. In this ripe moment in our seminary journey, remind us of our beginnings. Walk with us through this ending. And remind us most of all of the end of all this good labor that with all your children we might glorify you and enjoy you forever. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Hello, I'm Reverend Jeff O'Grady, the chair of the Board of Trustees at Princeton Seminary. And on behalf of the board, I congratulate you on your accomplishments as you graduate from the seminary. I wish we could all be together in the Princeton University Chapel for this great occasion, but it's not possible this year because of this pandemic. 
And though this is a virtual online commencement, it does not diminish in the least what you've accomplished. And I also want to commend you for your tenacity, determination, hard work, and grace extended to one another in this covenant community, especially this past year. You've all had to adapt to unexpected changes, learning from a distance, missing the classroom experiences and the worship experiences and the friendships that brought you here to the seminary. It's not been easy, but you have persevered. Congratulations. Seminary is by its nature preparatory for something else, whether you're going on to serve in ministry in a church or going on to further study or planning to work in a nonprofit, or even if you're undecided about what's next for you, whatever you will do with your education, you will represent Princeton Seminary as an alum. We're proud of you, and we hope that you're proud to represent all of us. Your education's about much more than a transaction. You've met the requirements for graduation, you'll receive your diploma, but your education has just begun. Your relationship with the seminary has just begun. Now I know many of you can't wait to get out of here and get on with your calling and your life, and that's normal. But you will also soon realize that there's more to learn and more to know to be able to effectively lead churches and classrooms and teams of people. Seminary has prepared you to be a lifelong learner. So take advantage of the opportunities for continuing education at Princeton Seminary and support the efforts of the seminary to provide students who will follow you here with scholarships so they too can embrace their callings. There is much more available to you here at the seminary, so take advantage of it and remain active as an alum. Several years ago, I had the pleasure of working alongside a gifted and dedicated elder of the church in my first call. It was a woman who played violin for the San Diego Symphony Orchestra. And on one occasion, I arrived for a meeting and Judy was seated at the table with a violin case across her lap. Apparently, she just finished instructing some young aspiring artist before the meeting. And so she brought her violin with her and she clutched the instrument throughout the entire meeting. I found myself intrigued. My curiosity at the conclusion of the meeting prompted me to inquire about the violin. And then with this glint in her eye, the kind that someone gets when they're actually talking about something for which they feel great passion, she related the story of completing her graduate studies on the East Coast at the Peabody Conservatory of Music. She was offered her first job performing with the Mexico City Symphony. And the concert master had a violin that produced the most beautiful sound she'd ever heard, but he only used it infrequently. So she approached him to find out whether he would consider selling it. And since he was less fond of the instrument than she was, they soon came to terms and she became the proud owner of a 1764 Stradivarius violin built when Mozart was still a boy. It had recently been appraised at over $35,000. So I understood why she kept it on her lap. It was her practice to never put that instrument down someplace where she might walk away and forget it. And then she made this memorable comment. Most treasures that you buy, you hang on a wall or you put under a glass, rarely do you use them as a tool working with them and sweating over them as I do this violin. But a great instrument like this has the ability to shape the artist because it can do so much more than the violinist who plays it. You see, some treasures are more useful than others because they produce value in us. They bring out our greatest potential. Education is like that. Faith in Jesus Christ is such a treasure. And those who express their faith have often created treasures in art and music. The object of our faith, Jesus Christ, is also the subject that draws us forward, shaping the believer, inviting us onward deeper, leaving us forever transformed in the process. That which we treasure is also that which we sweat over. 
Your education has the ability to produce enormous value in you. So don't just hang your diploma on a wall and instead use the education you've already sweat over as a tool. Because your faith beckons you onward, you have yet to reach your greatest potential. May God bless you and keep you as you discern and embrace your calling. Congratulations and welcome to the ministry of Jesus Christ. Hello, my name is Dr. Karen Jackson Weaver, and I am a member of the Board of Trustees here at Princeton Theological Seminary. Our scripture reading today comes from the book of Revelation. I will be reading from chapter 22, verses 1 through 5 in the New Revised Standard Version. The River of Life. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, bright as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb through the middle of the street of the city. On either side of the river is the tree of life, with its 12 kinds of fruit, producing its fruit each month, and the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. Nothing accursed will be found there anymore, but the throne of God and of the Lamb will be in it, and his servants will worship him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads. And there will be no more night, they need no light of lamp or sun, for the Lord God will be their light, and they will reign forever and ever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Holy God, we ask that as your spirit once moved over the face of the deep, creating beauty and light, so would you now move over our meditation of your holy word, that we may be closer transformed into the image of the word made flesh, Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear graduates, you spent your years at Princeton Theological Seminary learning how to become a textual person. Now, I don't think we put that in the seminary's marketing brochures, and it probably didn't come up at orientation. But you were not here long before you figured out what we're up to. We were giving you a sacred text for your life, for the church, and for the world. We taught you how to do exegesis of this text, and we taught you how to do exegesis of the congregations and our unjust society that is torn apart by racism and sexism and classism and fear and loneliness and alienation from God. We taught you how to maintain a theological conversation between the text and this context. We tried to free you up to argue with the text or to argue with each other about the text. But hopefully while you were here, no one said you don't need a text. Because if that was true, 
It would be as if we were saying, we have nothing to give you, you're on your own. Our text begins with the opening words, in the beginning God. Those are the defining words of your life. In the beginning, God. So apparently your life does not begin when you graduate or when you get a job or when you get out of debt. You have a creator. And so this text stands over against many of the other prevailing texts around us. Text that says you're on your own to self-construct your life, however best you can through your, your choices or your, your hard work or your pursuit of the next journey. No, our text for your life says you have a creator. And deeper into the text, it says that this one who has begun a good work in you will bring it to completion. The good work of the creator is not yet done. These opening words also make it clear that all humanity has been created in the image of God, and thus all the families of the earth are to be approached with the utmost honor as if we were approaching holiness. And so racism is always off text for us. A little further, just a couple pages into the text, it, it tells us that after we were created, we were placed in a garden and told to take care of it. It is our fundamental vocation in life. And so killing the climate is also off text. As you spent your years studying this text, making your way through it, no doubt there was some passages that that frankly called out to you, that claimed your life. And you can't, you can't be done with this text. You know you're probably gonna spend the rest of your life peeling it back, finding deeper and deeper layers because it's telling your story. Maybe you found yourself standing alongside Sarah and Abraham and Jacob who each tried on their own to make a blessing happen again, as if they were the creator of their own lives. Or maybe you found yourself in the text right beside Moses when he was called to a place he didn't want to go, and you know that sense. Or maybe you joined the Hebrews day after day, feeling like you're just wandering around with only a vague sense of a promised land. Maybe you found solace in the psalm that says God has been keeping track of your tossings and putting your tears in a bottle. Or maybe you found inspiration in Amos's fiery demand to let the justice roll down like the waters. Or the clarity of a call from Micah to simply do justice and love kindness and walk humbly. Again, these texts call out to us and help guide and shape the direction of our lives. Most Christians would claim that the turning point in our text comes from verses like, and the word was with God, and the word was God. All things that came into being came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. There's that creation theme again. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory full of grace and truth. Maybe during your time here, you enjoyed your time with the Gospels, walking with Jesus and the disciples, witnessing him doing the most miraculous things. And in time, you discovered that the real question is not, did that really happen, but does it really happen? Is Jesus still the healer or the one who can cast out evil? The more time you spend with the text, the better the questions become. But now, as you prepare to leave seminary, I want my 
final words of encouragement to be, remember that the end of our text, your text, has already been written. And it ends beautifully. It gets a little scary right before the ending. But the very ending tells us that the home of God is now among mortals. And God will wipe away every tear and death will be no more. It tells us about a river that flows through the city of God with the tree beside it. And the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. That's the end of the text. And there's nothing in your fleeting years here that you're going to do to make that ending any better or any worse. But if you are going to endure and even thrive in whatever calling God has given you, if you're going to find the strength to pursue the serious kind of work to which God will lead you, you have to be clear about where this text is leading all of us. The history of the world, the history of your life, it's not running loose. It begins with the decisive act of God's creation. It finds its center in the the decisive gift of the word becoming flesh and dwelling among us in Jesus Christ. It finds its decisive fulfillment in the coming reign of Jesus Christ, the peaceable reign of Christ, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. From the beginning to the end, this is a text that's really all about hope. It is the easiest thing in the world to say that things are getting bad, that our society is deeply divided between warring factions, that the church is in decline, that violence and injustice are everywhere. Well, all of that is true. But don't look out the windows of the church and say that the world is in trouble and think that you're being prophetic. If you really want to be prophetic, be a leader who goes to the part of the world to which God leads you and who has something to say that is useful and unique. Give us a vision. Show us how to live as if the story isn't over yet, not by a long shot. And on the days in which your ministry or your scholarship or your life is discouraging, and it feels like you're back once again meandering through the wilderness, come back to the end of the story. And remember that the promise of the text is not that things will improve soon for either you or the nations. No, the promise is that from the beginning to the end, Jesus Christ the Savior has been at work. The promise is that the word of God in Christ Jesus is still dwelling well with us. The promise is that the Lamb of God walks down every street and into every community, filling it with holiness and possibilities. So please, please leave here with a message of hope because our world is literally dying for hope. In the name of the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.
Master of Arts in Christian Education and Formation. The degree of Master of Arts in Christian Education and Formation with tracks in teaching, ministry with young people, and spiritual formation and mission is a professional degree for church educators or those who wish to serve in ministry with young people. It is conferred upon those who have successfully completed the studies in education or youth ministry and in certain of the theological disciplines as prescribed therein in this seminary. Mr. President, on behalf of the faculty, I present to you the candidates for the degree of Master of Arts in Christian Education and Formation, certifying that they possess the requisite academic credentials and have fulfilled all of the requirements for admission thereto. By virtue of the authority granted to this School of Theology by the State of New Jersey, and in the name of the Board of Trustees, I admit you to the degree of Master of Arts in the area of Christian education with tracks in teaching, ministry with young people, and spiritual formation and mission, and to all of the privileges and responsibilities pertaining thereto. So use this right to teach, that every thought may be brought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Makins Basque Johnson. Amber Lee Scoville. Clement Tegbe Woods. Congratulations to these graduates. Master of Arts, Theological Studies. The degree of Master of Arts, Theological Studies represents foundational understanding of the disciplines of theological scholarship as appropriate for ministry in the church together with specialized study in one or more fields of that scholarship. It is conferred upon those who have successfully completed the course of study prescribed therefore in this seminary. Mr. President, on behalf of the faculty, I present to you these candidates for the degree of Master of Arts, Theological Studies, certifying that they possess the requisite academic credentials and have fulfilled all of the requirements for admission thereto. By the authority granted to this School of Theology by the State of New Jersey, in the name of the Board of Trustees, I admit you to the degree of Master of Arts Theological Studies and to all of the privileges and responsibilities pertaining thereto. So use this right to teach that every thought may be brought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Adedayo Ayodele Adebayo. Kara Jo Applegate. Liesel Bosch. Tristan D. Carwile. Daniel Robert Krozniak. Don B. Jung. James Alexander DeYoung Karsten. Timothy J. Keiterling. Corianne Porter. D. Shehan Rodrigo. Colin Jacob Thomas. 
The following student received the Master of Arts Theological Studies degree in October 2020. Julia Christine Parker. Congratulations to these graduates. The degree of Master of Divinity is the basic professional degree for the practice of ministry. It is conferred upon those who have successfully completed studies in scripture, theology, the history of Christianity, and certain of the behavioral sciences, together with an apprenticeship in ministerial practice as prescribed therein in this seminary. The degree of Master of Arts in Christian Education and Formation with tracks in teaching, ministry with young people, and spiritual formation and mission is a professional degree for church educators or for those who wish to serve in ministry with young people. It is conferred upon those who have successfully completed the studies in the education of the youth ministry and in certain of the theological disciplines as prescribed therefore in the seminary. Mr. President, on behalf of the faculty, I present to you these candidates for the degrees of Master of Divinity and Master of Arts in Christian Education and Formation, certifying that they possess the requisite academic credentials and have fulfilled all of the requirements for admission thereto. By virtue of the authority granted to this School of Theology by the State of New Jersey, and in the name of the Board of Trustees, I admit you to the dual degrees of Master of Divinity and Master of Arts, and to all of the privileges and responsibilities pertaining thereto. So use this right to teach that every thought may be brought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Tyler Brinks. Alexandra Marlowe Miller Kanak. Melissa Caroline Temple. Elisa Hovagamian Yunel. Ellen Margaret White. Tara Ann Woodward. Please join me in congratulating these graduates. The degree of Master of Divinity is the basic professional degree for the practice of ministry. It is conferred upon those who have successfully completed studies in scripture, theology, the history of Christianity, and certain of the behavioral sciences, together with an apprenticeship in ministerial practice as prescribed therein in this seminary. Mr. President, on behalf of the faculty, I present to you these candidates for the degree of Master of Divinity, certifying that they possess the requisite academic credentials and have fulfilled all of the requirements for admission thereto. By virtue of the authority granted to this School of Theology by the State of New Jersey, and in the name of the Board of Trustees, I admit you to the degree of Master of Divinity and to all of the privileges and responsibilities pertaining thereto. So use this right to teach, that every thought may be brought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Emmanuel Ajimfra. 
Alexandria, Egresia, Elagarbis, Rebecca Anderson, Madeline Joy Bass, James Edward Beatty, Jalen Baker, Lindsay Marie Bates, Craig Bingham, Hannah Kate Bingham, Andrew Scott Bridgman, Tamara Lee Bush, Kyle Chen, Crystal Dawn Christofferson, Stephen Arell Clark, Albert Philip Curley III, Joseph Dillon Libert Deardeth, Stephen Rocco de Trulio, Bethany Douglas, Wesley Michael Flock, Sarah Friesleben. Eric Nathan Foom. Diamond Janae Gant. Leslie Enid Gaboyo. Matthew J. Hamill. Peter Joseph Hartwig, Mary Frances Hayes, Matthew Heisler, Christine Nicole James. Samuel J. Yang, Susie Yo, Rachel May Johnson, Peter Christian Phillips Janescu. Dussel Kang, Andrew Scott Kaufman, Jacob Dale Kennedy, Robert Kraft, Mackenzie Kate Kramer. Ruth Geraldo Manuel, Desiree Celise McCray, Grant Allen Mojan,
Morgan Christine October. Chandler Owens. Mion E. Park. Olivia Hartley Patterson. Zachary Kim Pierce. Allie Caitlin Pexa. Kyle Ryle Putnam. Molly Joanna Ramsey. Herlin Antion Redmond. Jenna Nicole Reed. Christopher Nathaniel Renshaw. Rachel Lee Rim. Christian Joy Roberts. Melissa Roberts. Michael Madison Roberts. Jacqueline Ann Rodriguez. Jonathan Rodriguez. Yevgeny Safranov. Alfredo Sanchez. Macy Elise Ming Shuang Sep. Lauren Rose Seppi. Nathan Lance Seppi. Darcella Patterson Sassons. Brandon Mason Smee. Courtney Melville Steininger. Samuel Ferguson Stevens. Shalom Joel Stewart. Jason Suh. Gail Madeline Tierney. Ashley Marie Wells. Minjin Yo. Nicole Lee Zimmerman. The following students received the Master of Divinity degree in October 2020. Luke Andrew DeBoer. Hansel Kang. Please join me in congratulating these graduates. The degree of Master of Theology represents advanced study in one or another of the disciplines of religious scholarship beyond the basic professional program. 
It is conferred upon those who have successfully completed the course of study prescribed, therefore, in this seminary. Mr. President, on behalf of the faculty, I present to you these candidates for the degree of Master of Theology, certifying that they possess the requisite academic and theological credentials and have fulfilled all of the requirements for admission thereto. By virtue of the authority granted to this School of Theology by the State of New Jersey and in the name of the Board of Trustees, I admit you to the degree of Master of Theology and to all of the privileges and responsibilities pertaining thereto. So use this right to teach that every thought may be brought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Cedric Nickel Anderson. Claudia Alejandra Caballero Orellana. John Quentin Chafee. Kirsten Jane Laderick. Rebecca Joy Rogers. Matthew Jacob Van Norstrand. Binu Mamparampil Varghese. Congratulations to these graduates. The degree of Doctor of Philosophy represents theological scholarship and inquiry on the highest academic level, marking its holders as peers with their teachers and qualified to serve on university, college, and seminary faculty. This degree is conferred upon those who have successfully completed the course of study prescribed, therefore, in this seminary. Mr. President, on behalf of the faculty, I present to you these candidates for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy, certifying that they possess the requisite academic and theological credentials and have fulfilled all of the requirements for admission thereto. By virtue of the authority granted to this School of Theology by the State of New Jersey, and in the name of the Board of Trustees, I admit you to the degree of Doctor of Philosophy and to all of the privileges and responsibilities pertaining thereto. So use this right to teach that every thought may be brought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Sarah Ann Bixler, dissertation. Networks of Belonging, Envisioning Adolescent Attachment in Congregations. Alyssa Lair Evans, Dissertation, Conversion and Commentary, Andreas Bodenstein von Karlstadt's Commentary on Augustine's De Spiritu et Litera and his development as a reformer 1517 to 1519. Lindsay Hankins, dissertation, Thomas Aquinas on women at prayer. Isaac Young Kim, dissertation, beauty in John Owen's moral theology. George Frederick Rambo, Dissertation, From Mimesis to Myth, The Transformation of the Tale of Cyprian of Antioch in Late Antiquity. The following student received the Doctor of Philosophy degree 
in October 2020. Stephanie Mota Thurston, dissertation, Making Citizens in a Credential Society, Identities, Values, and Practices at Brooklyn High. Welcome to the Company of Scholars. Beloved, let us pray. O Holy One, with deep love and gratitude, we lift to you the graduates of the Princeton Theological Seminary class of 2021. We thank you for their journeys that brought them to this time and place. We thank you for their loved ones, families and friends and communities of faith that have supported them along the way. We thank you for their presence in our community and the ways they have blessed us. O oh, Holy One, we ask now that your spirit come, the same spirit that stirred over the face of the deep, the same spirit that set a star in the night sky of Bethlehem, the same spirit that gave life and breath to your church on that first Pentecost. O oh, Holy One, may that spirit come and fill our graduates so that when they leave this commencement service and go across the street or across the country or around the globe, they go forth as your people, a people of light and love and healing and hope. O oh, Holy One, we offer all the prayers in your precious name, ever grateful, for your great faithfulness in our lives. Amen.
And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you.